Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great stuff. Thank you so much. What a lovely introduction. It's great to be back at CPAC, it really is. You just saw, in that video, you just saw 25 years of my life concertinaed down into three minutes. <laughs> Didn't I look young once? I was even quite shy when I started off, you know. But it just goes to show that sometimes the good things in life have to be fought for. The good things in life take time to come to fruition. That the good things in life, in the face of the opposition of the establishment, are hard to achieve. But it all makes you realise, doesn't it, that in 2016, with the Brexit vote and the election of Donald Trump, we stuffed the establishment. We did. And the really good news is that here we are, over a year on, and that revolution that you were all a part of, that revolution is still rolling. It's still rolling across the West. Back in 2000, just 8% of the votes in Europe went to patriotic parties. This year, it is 24% of the vote that is going to patriotic parties, and that number can only go up. And I think the real inspiration now for the future is going to be the man that appeared on this stage and spoke to you this morning. You know, I, I was very happy to support, in any way I could, Donald Trump's campaign back in 16. I now think with him over a year into the presidency, it was the best decision I've ever made in my life. I really do. I really do. I, uh, I thought he'd be good, but I've got to tell you, he has exceeded all expectations. He's on the way to being a truly great president of this country. And I was lucky. I was fortunate this morning that shortly after he came off this stage, I got the chance to have a conversation with him. And I must say, my impression of him today was, here was a president at ease with himself. Here was a president in good humour. And here was a president at the very top of his game. So there's plenty of good news out there, but we must not and we should not underestimate our enemies. The establishment are still not reconciled with those shock results as they saw them back in 2016. The establishment, in some ways, are fighting harder to damage the reputation of the president and, indeed, to try to delay water down or stop Brexit. These people will never stop. And you've seen it here in this country that now the mainstream media have actually become the opposition. They're not objectively reporting news. 90% of what you see on mainstream media in the States is negative about the president, mind you. I suppose, given the state the Democrats are in, maybe there needs to be an opposition of some kind in this country. Because they kind of haven't quite got their act together, have they? In fact, I'm hearing stories that maybe they'll nominate Hillary next time round as well. <laughs> Don't boo, you should jolly well hope they do. He'll win by a lot more than last time, believe me. But it's reached a level where they, are, they themselves are now engaged in some of the most bizarre conspiracy theories. If you read centre-left broadsheet newspapers in this country and in the United Kingdom, you will be aware 
that I too am a person of interest <laughs> to the FBI. I've read that actually I am at the centre of an international spider's web. I am the one person connecting Trump, Putin and Julian Assange. <laughs> I've been running memory sticks back and forth from the White House and the Kremlin to Assange. I mean, I have to tell you, I hadn't realised I was that important. I really hadn't. I'm told, I'm told the next time I set foot on US soil, I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to be put in front of Mueller because of my Russian connections. Oh, and what is without doubt is that I've been funded by the Russians for my entire political career. Well, let me tell you, I've never been to Russia. I've never been to Moscow. I've never met a Russian operative or agent. I've never done business in Russia. I've never taken money from Russia. I may be guilty of drinking the odd Russian vodka. <laughs> but I know, I know from my own part in this story that the whole thing can be summed up by a simple term. It is just fake news, isn't it? It's fake news. And it's fake news to suggest that the president colluded with the Russians in his election campaign. He didn't, but you know what? When this is over, they still won't stop. They still will never accept that their view of the world has been turned upside down. They will keep on fighting. They will keep trying to damage the reputations of everybody involved with the conservative patriotic movement. So we, we must not underestimate just how powerful our enemies are. Just think of George Soros. He gets a bigger boo in England than that, but anyway, there we are. <laughs> That's more like it. You know, that Open Society Forum, he has put into that $30 billion, not $30 million, $30 billion. And from what I can see, he is attempting to intervene and disrupt in every single election and cause and campaign that is taking place across the Western world. These people, these people don't believe, people like Soros don't believe in the existence of the nation state. They don't believe as we believe don't we, in basic patriotism and believing in who we are. They don't believe, they don't believe in national identity. They want us to live in a world with open borders. <laughs> Boo too. Absolutely. That is what they want and they're powerful and they keep trying. And you know, I've sensed, and by the way, this is my third CPAC. I mean, they keep inviting me back. And can I say to Matt Schlapp and the team, every year I come back to CPAC, it is bigger and better and more professional than it was the year before. Well done, Matt, and to all of your team. But I've sensed among some of you in the last couple of days, a great sense of optimism. You're optimistic because you know something? This president has made America optimistic once again. And that's a good thing. <laughs> whether it's the tax cuts, whether it's deregulation, whether it's growth, jobs, or whether importantly, it's America's standing in the world, because do you know something? Under those eight, years, those eight years of Obama, people thought much less of America at the end of that eight year period. I agree.
But from right from, right from that first speech he gave in Riyadh to the one that he gave in Davos, all of those that said he wasn't up to it, all of those that said he'd embarrass himself in America on the world stage have all been proved wrong, have they not? They all have been proved wrong. In fact, I felt he was so full of self-confidence that when he was walking around in Beijing, I thought he was about to put a bid in for the place. <laughs> so... Well, you never know, a few new golf courses, a couple of hotels. I mean, it's, it's always possible after he's been president. But the point is, a lot of you are feeling really happy, you're feeling really upbeat, and the mood music is, do you know what? We were really worried about these midterm elections, but kind of, we're not so worried anymore. And do you know something? The biggest danger, the biggest single danger to the huge victories that were achieved back in 2016 is complacency. That is the biggest danger that we face. And I would say, I would say to all of you, if you want to see the president keep those majorities in the houses, if you want to see the president go on in the last half of this first term, and I emphasize, this is just his first term, isn't it? But if you want to see him in the right position, he's going to need every bit of help and support that you can possibly give him. He's going to need you to get your walking boots on once again and to get out there and deliver those leaflets and knock on those doors and guarantee him a great victory in November 18. So please, please go and help your president move on to even greater things. <laughs> Unfortunately, the situation on my side of the pond is not quite as good. It's not going quite as well as it is here. There is an attempt by that unholy trinity of big banks, big business and big politics to stop Brexit from happening. We are due to leave the European Union on March the 29th next year. They are going to do all they can to frustrate the will of 17.4 million people. I am not saying that they will succeed, but they will certainly try. My gut feel at the moment is that we will just about get there. But we may not. We may not. And if they do, in the worst case scenario, overturn that result and insult the intelligence and the decency of the British people by making us have that vote again, then I'll tell you one thing, I will be straight back in the front line of that campaign. <laughs> I will, I will. <laughs> Do not underestimate, do not underestimate the power of ordinary people when they get together and go out and try and make things happen. No, I don't want to have to do this again, but if they want us, if they want that battle to be refought, I'll be back there and next time from me, it'll be no more Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't happen. But the one thing I do know, and the one thing I've learnt from these 25 years of being involved in campaigns in Britain, all over Europe, in America, the one thing I do know is this, that democracy, liberty and freedom don't come for nothing. That unless you're prepared to fight and battle for those things constantly, that as soon as you stop peddling, the other side, the establishment, will hit back and try to take those things away. Ladies and gentlemen, we should be enormously proud, all of us, in the last couple of years, that we have 
managed to change the course of history. But what we now have to do... But what we now have to do is to make sure that change of direction, that change of history, is not just a short-term phenomenon. We've got to keep fighting and keep working to make sure that our victory is permanent. That's what we've got to do. That's what we've got to do. And we can do it. And we can do it. It's what the people all across the Western world want. I hope you've had a really good day here at CPAC. I know you're about to get ready to go out for drinks and dinner and to have some fun. Well, I am, I've got to tell you. But I want to say, on behalf of the guests, thank you, CPAC. I hope all of you have enjoyed today as much as I have, and I hope to come back and see you one day again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.